The Mets flame out. Well, they got a wow. moment left here. Wow. And the wild card <laughs> round ends. Diamond Diehards is on with Risen Dog being completely exhausted. Is writing him off. <laughs> Joe Rizzo here bringing you the last inning of the wild card. Cheers, you're still watching. Smash <laughs> baseball. If you can't watch anymore, uh, we jumped on early. We're like, we're going on live after the game, regardless of the outcome. And uh, it, I mean, listen. Let's, dog, let's, let's be real. Riz sent me that text about two nanoseconds after the uh, thing grounded up the third baseline. It was 6 nothing. <laughs> No, it was way before that. You could check the. You could check the. Uh, the you check the tape. I gotta check the tape. You could check the tape. Yeah, it was way. Be, it was way before that. It, I think it was like two nothing or three nothing. I, I thought about it before. I was telling. Uh, I, I I was telling Debbie Rizzo that like you know. Nine forty eight. I don't know what that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so here's the thing. I don't know. So, so here's the thing. It's as as we start this. Mm -hmm. It's six nothing Padres. They're about to commence the bottom of it's the bottom of the ninth, right? Or is it the eighth or the ninth? I, I had to. I was of, setting up the show. Bottom of the ninth. Josh Hader is in. Mets have an out hit, ten to one. Outscored six nothing. Okay, so we either have the end of the Met season in disappointing fashion, or we're going to be on for the sickest comeback <laughs> in playoff history right now, folks. So strap it in and get ready. <laughs> Because the New York Giants are four and one, and dog is all about football. It's <laughs> starting in about five minutes here. Moving around, moving it on. Now listen, the Mets have one hope here, and it's that the the Josh Hader that was the one the Padres got immediately in the tra after their trade for him with the Brewers is the one that shows up tonight, and not the Josh Hader that's been dominating uh, uh, hitters. You know, basically like the way Edwin Diaz has this year. You know, he's been doing that for the last like four or five years. But when he came over in the deal from the Brewers, he was he was atrocious. Like he was he was he looked like uh, you know the version of Veroldus Chapman that we were seeing from the Yankees this year. But uh, he's kind of righted the ship. And um, I don't know, dog. You know, Buck Showalter was trying to pull all kinds of stops <laughs> out here. I mean, he was Musgrove was totally dominating. You got. Uh, you got Andrew McCutcheon, the former National League MVP, saying it's not, you know, Vaseline or anything. It's red hot that he's putting on his ears. Uh, but, you know, that did. Well, that's, weird. No... that's weird enough in its own right. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's some sort of some sort of stimulant. But like you got to, you know, Buck Showalter sending out the uh, the umps to look at him after six innings instead of maybe doing it after like four, you know, like try to rattle him. Then it seemed to get Musgrove more fired up and he becomes the first pitcher in major league history to throw seven scoreless, at least seven scoreless innings and allow one hit or less in a winner take all game. So, I mean, look. It's six nothing right now, but when you run into that, like as we used to say, as as Devil fans, which I'm wearing a, a Devil's Stone Pony shirt, New Jersey Devil. Even the Diamond Dog is making an appearance. Yeah. It, oh, there's the Diamond Dog. So as we used to say during these Devil games, when the Devils, you know, in the in the late '90s and early 2000s would play these like one nothing games where they would lose, you'd be like, well, you know what? They lost one nothing. I mean, it could have been seven nothing. It do if you don't score, it doesn't matter, and. Here they are against Hader, and, you know, they're letting Tomas Nito bat in the ninth. Like, what? I mean, I actually love Tomas Nito, but, I mean, don't you have to, like, can we start empty in the bench against against Josh Hader? Like, are we just going to go into that night? Um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> are you going to put up Alvarez? I guess you put up Alvarez. What, Ruff, I mean, at least Ruff got on base, right? I mean, put up, put up anybody. I mean... Thomas put up McCann. I mean, I thought McCann should have started in the first game because he has great numbers in his career oh, against he's... Darvish, and he was and he finished the season hot. You no, know, the last week he but... can't hit shit. He's he's been terrible this year, unfortunately. And I like I like McCann too, but he's just he's been awful this year. Other than like he had his one last good game at the uh, the very last week of the season. Well, I know, but that's sometimes how you catch lightning in a bottle. And like he had he had a good you know last few games. Uh, he's got great numbers against Darvish. Put him in there. And then, you know, Buck starts changing around the lineup and things like that. Like, I, I just, you know, I, 
it, it's just shocking that the Mets are in this position. It's shocking, dog. It's shocking. Yeah, it's uh, you know, you can look back. I mean, obviously, everyone talks the Braves series, and you can talk the Cubs getting swept. I don't know. I mean, I don't. They're just imploding at that. I mean, it, and it really comes down to, I guess, two major things, right? I mean, you have the your lineup, which has been, yeah, it's funny. Like the like the the early season lineup, right? That's kind of like right when we were, we were talking all our Shigon stuff and like you, you know hitting the ball where they ain't and doing all like that. They were the epitome of doing that, and they had some power. Uh, mixed in as well you know perfect combo um it feels like they kind of lost that way a little bit second half other than mcneil um kind of the rest of the team seemed to get a little a little homer happy a little of like you know let's go on let's get it let's get a guy on first and like hit a homer that that sort of turns into their offense which i think uh, which i think hurt them um and you know their big three flat out ran out of gas i mean that there's no other way to sort of put it right i mean they got you got six starts, you know, between the Braves series and the, and the wild card. You know, did you get one? Did you get a did you get a half a Musgrave, a Musgrove? No, right. I mean, you get you know the Grom, just an okay game, right? Bunch of homers, like didn't, didn't shut it out. He kept you in it in the Braves. Um, and then you know his last his last one on yesterday, okay, right? I mean, I'm dominating the Grom. Not a, oh my god, it's all over. It's you know, he kept you in, gave you a chance to win, and they did. Right, but the other four were were just terrible, and you didn't you get a single a single shutdown start from at least the top two guys who should be shutdown guys, and Bassett has sneakily sort of been one of their shutdown guys, and all of them sucked, and that's it. Diaz was good, and the the main starters sucked, and they couldn't hit. So, and he, and even in the end, you get what Buck to do on that one, dog. <laughs> even in the even in the end, you know, at that amazing hit that made it six nothing by Juan Soto off of Diaz. He's got runners on second and third. Yep. And it's, you know, Diaz throws as as David Cohn said during the broadcast, probably if you could take any pitch from any pitcher this season, it, you know, it's it's that one from Diaz and he just hits it out of Nito's glove practically and just strokes it, be, you know, beyond Escobar at third base, going the other way, and just gets the two runs in okay. earlier in the against, game against the shift, right? Which is yeah. great, and that's how that should be solved. Um, I'm not 100 percent he was actually attempting to do that, or oh, he, oh, he, he was, he was, dog. Yeah, he was looking he? at, yeah, he was. The he, stance there looked a little weird. I mean, I, I'd have to see more of him on that. But... Yeah, you watch the hand, you watch the hands, you watch the hips. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was, I don't think that was a stroke of luck. I, I think he, you know, he wasn't trying to hit a homer. He knew he put, if he puts the ball in play on the left side, it's almost certainly going to get through yeah. and he drives in those two runs. And that was really like that. I mean, even at four, nothing, right. You felt like, you know, they, they got to run around and something. Alonso's up, right. Like if he, if he pops a homer or somebody does something, you're still in it at six, nothing boy. Uh, that's just like, the death now and, I, and now I hate, you know i hate to sort of say it now i kind of don't want lindor to be the last out all the, all the crap he gets whatever i'm like you know what i kind of want Marte to fly out to the warning track <laughs> and just just put a bowl in the season right now you really but think Marte is gonna i don't need to hear lindor you know bruise rain down lindor and we we start rolling into the off season on negative note you really think Marte is gonna make the last out against the lefty here he's taking his time changing his bat broke the bat He's. I'll tell you what. He's to me. He's been an amazing bright spot for the Mets. Oh, absolutely. And and when he went down, that really, that's really, really, really we, hurt. We, you must say we talked about that uh, on our show, and that's that is fair. I mean, that that dramatically changed that team's lineup, um, and you know, it showed. It showed the rest of it. And you know, he's he's obviously not back. He's he's banding it up. He's doing the best he can, but he's clearly not where he needs to be. Um, hitting wise at this point but yeah disappointment i mean it, nothing to say right i mean i said i said before the series you know obviously disappointment of the division whatnot told me the beginning of the season you know 101 in the wild card uh uncle paul had called it i had uh i think i had him win the division if i remember correctly in our our, our first in our uh, our predictions uh, but something similar, I didn't even have 100 wins, that's for sure. Um, you know, just lost to a better team. You know, they didn't choke in reality. I mean, 
maybe to get back a little bit in September and blew some games they should have. But, you know, they won 101 games. You know, second most in team history. Um, but, yeah, it goes, you know, there's a lot of question marks now going off into uh, potentially into the offseason here. We're not, we're not done yet. But, um, you know, finish it off like that. And, you know, what do you have? going to next season right i mean which which shirts is going to show up is the grom going to be there right <laughs> start, all, is bassett all, going to be there <laughs> bassett, yeah right there's a lot of questions is nimmo so, going to be there yeah um is otonic going to be in the the bronx and that's it and uh, can't do play by play but it's all over <laughs> oh wait you must be ahead of me then i gotta listen to howie so, oh, you're listening to Howie. Okay. I'm, I'm, multi I'm multitasking for once. I think this is, uh, I don't think we could legally do this, but <laughs> this is, uh, you know, we're just talking and, uh, yeah, this, in the background. No, this, yeah, this is, uh, got to lower our televisions in the background, I think. So yeah, the Mets, uh, it's officially done there. The Mets season is officially done. Wow, I, I just, I, you know what? I, I'll tell you what I also didn't expect. That if they lost these games, dog, they lo the two games that they lost, they lost each one by six runs. Yeah, they got pounded. I mean, I don't think I said, did, we were sort of saying before, the, uh, you know, I mean, what the hell? The Padres hit 241 this year. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, uh, 318 on base. I don't know. All of a sudden, this is the Padres that they were saying, you know, ex Tatis, these are the Padres we all thought we were going to see this year. And like, didn't seem to show up until you know a little spurt at the end you know and again we sort of talked you know we talked a little bit in the playoffs right you know you heat up at the right time teams getting cold at the right at the wrong time i don't know Just oh hard. wait Just hard. well the mets the mets record setting season ends uh they just set the record for fewest hits in a winner take all game in major league history they got one oh my god like that's just so I, I, I can't believe. Sharon, <laughs> yeah, believe well i mean they they put it up on espn one hit one hit, one hit. nelson from alonzo single wow this is this is crazy. so the a, padres yeah. go on to take on the dodgers yo musgrove oral horseshaw there he is i don't know and that was your thing i'm sitting there looking i'm like and i get the spin rates up and whatever else, and we don't even get into the whole like whatever so you get something i'm like i don't know i mean the pitches didn't look that good like I don't know. There was an awful lot of them sitting in the middle there that, like, it seemed if DeGrom did one of those a game, that would turn into a home run. I'm like, I must have seen 10 of those go across the Musgrove, and they were all befuddled by it. Even McNeil, I mean, that, that was the scare. Like, McNeil, even McNeil, I couldn't adjust to it. And he is, like, you know, their best sort of pure contact hitter. And uh, he looked befuddled up there. So, hey, you know what? Padres went out, kicked their ass. You know what? Braves went out, kicked their ass. Hat tip. You uh, you won. You know, that's might have lost a little too, <laughs> but yeah. I'll, I'll get the Mets one. I mean, even the outs the Padres are making are like getting pounded, right? I mean, there was those were like war I must have seen like eight warning track shots, um, even on outs for uh, for the Padres. I mean, they were smoking the ball. Um, yeah, I don't know. Tuffy. Hey. It when your season ends and your and your only lament is well at least they didn't get no hit that's not a good ending that you're looking for, <laughs> no. but you know what I'll tell you what it feels as a Yankee fan that ending for the Mets feels a lot like the endings that we've had against the Astros I could tell you that that sucks it just yeah that, you were better teams but the Astros were were clearly like much better teams right oh I mean both both teams were higher up the chain right. Um, I would say the Yankees losing to the Astros. I can kind of see it. it's like the Mets losing to the Braves, right? Like I think it's like, yeah, you could probably beat them, and you could argue the situation out, but like the other team's probably a little bit better than you. I'm like, I I honestly can't really say that with Mets versus the Padres. No, what I what I mean, so. dog, is like the feeling of your team no showing in in the big game, especially like okay. offensively, when That's you right. have all the you have all these weapons, you know, you're hitting all these home runs, you're scoring all these runs, and you know, one game you score 11 runs, and then like the next game you come back and you get like one hit. Like, come on, I mean, yeah. the Yankees against the Astros with Lance McCullers throwing, you know literally like 19 straight curveballs, you know, 
Like just it was it was it was infuriating. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, just looking down. Infuriating. Down, I mean, here's you know, Nimmo three thirty three. I mean, like you went crazy yesterday. Lindor two hundred. Alonso three hundred. Okay. I guess for the playoff series here, McNeil one eighty two. Canna, who was like unbelievable in August. I don't think he's got a big hit since like the end of August. Oh oh oh. <laughs> right. We'll go back. Oh oh oh. Um, Nido, you know, kind of light hitting. Tends to come up with a clutch hits, whatever though. 125. I mean, they just, they literally, they couldn't hit anything. They couldn't roll in the card. Well, but they, I mean, they did win, you know, the middle game there. They, they went the, crazy the that one pitched game. And, yeah. you know, but they don't, they don't spread it out. It's just, it's just, it's still shocking. But you know what? Like you said, the Padres ended up in, in this spot becoming the team that, you know, we talked about in the off season and there's no Tatis and, you know, the guy who ends up keying it is is Soto, right? Between his walk. I mean, the guy is pot, you know, he's going to try to ask for $50 million a season in not, you know, this offseason, but the next when he becomes a free agent. And there he is in a playoff game laying down a sacrifice bunt. I, I, w- I was shocked, but it was a huge play in the game. Yeah. And his, and, you know, I think, his, I think he was punting for a hit, but it was still like, it was I don't think six- he was. No, I don't think yeah. he was. Yeah, he I don't think he was. Yeah, I don't know. But he's he's bunting. He he's he's bunting strategically. Well, it was positive anyway. Exactly. It was it would, no matter what though. Yeah, it was gonna be a positive play. It was a smart. It was a smart baseball play. Period. Yeah, I mean, it's an unpopular baseball play now with analytics because you're like, well, you know, he's supposed to be your, you know, your number two hitter. Arguably, is like your best hitter, and yeah, but you what, know, why are you what, giving what, up an what out? It whatever. To? It led to runs. Exactly, it led to two runs. Right. I think kind of so. Works. Yeah, it it worked. It worked. But you know what works? Like you you zig when they zag and you zag when they zig. And yep. and that's what they did and they just I, uh, you know. that was I had the the line on a little thread on the side, right? The Mets got Mets. I mean that's that's yeah. exactly that looked like the Mets from the first half. I get that they were facing, right? And it was just boom, 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 boom. You know, big hit, big hit, big hit. Um, you know, and then and then dominant pitching. And that's exactly what they ran into and got smoked by it. So, do you do you find fault with Buck? Do you find fault with Buck here at all? Hard to do because you feel like without him at the helm, you don't come near 101 wins probably. But in the end, did he did he just did he tinker a little too much? Did he mess with the lineup there at at the end when you didn't need to, like against the Braves? You know, was yeah, there... the Braves, yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I you know they just didn't hit right, and then you know they had the they had the, the base lineup back this night, right? Where they get one hit. Right. So, um, yeah, that's a legit, legit sort of pop. I kind of didn't mind the lineup change and just kind of push up, you know, some of your hotter guys a little bit closer, try and get a little, try and bunch it together, get a little lightning. Um, didn't work. I don't think it's a, I don't think it was a horrible idea. I, the, like we talked the last time, right? I mean, the Alvarez getting thrown into that, that first game in Atlanta. That was, that was the only one I could sort of say, like organizationally, they kind of set that guy up to fail. Um, so that was a mistake, you know, and then they played, they played him in, you know, the last, the last series, he gets a home run. I'm like, okay, the, where is this guy in this? Like you're saying, like Nino, right? Like, I don't know. Could you throw Alvarez at that point? Screw it. Like the bottom of the night, you're down six, nothing. The hell with the kid. Go ahead and give him a shot. I guess yeah. hater. Put, put, hater who, put has no, who has no video on the guess, right? Versus Nino in the bottom of the night. No, of course not. You know? He's going to throw him fastballs. He's going to throw him fastballs. Yeah, exactly. We give it a shot, right? Your kid hit it. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna throw them in against the Braves, you might as well throw them in there. So, um, what's so gonna be, w- 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 dog? If the Padres beat the Dodgers, oh. does that take the sting <laughs> off of it for the Met fan a little bit, or no? Oh, 100 percent. Okay, so the in the 19 games between the Padres and the Dodgers this season, do you know who won the season series? Uh, the Padres. They didn't. The Dodgers actually won. <laughs> Would you like to hear some of the numbers? Yeah, uh, I don't think I do, actually. Yeah, well, just lie. <laughs> gonna oh, you're going to lie now. You're going to lie now. So the Dodgers went 14-5 and five against the Padres, and they outscored them by 62 runs in 19 games. Here we go. You know what? That was just like so, the best versus everybody, right, Till September game. <laughs> this is David against Goliath now. Like, the Padres, the Padres have their chance to hang in there and, and, you know, steal one away. This is the shot that, that they've wanted, right? 
and it the matchup doesn't look good for them. However, Austin Nola, Trent Grisham, Jesus effing Christ, really? I'm yeah, sorry. Trent Grisham <laughs> honestly played the series. He looked like Ken Griffey Jr. offensively hey, and defensively. How in the world? But that's baseball, that is, Susan. That is like baseball. he he like Pat Borders, uh-uh. who you know most of our viewers, well, actually our viewers probably have heard of him. <laughs> You know, he won a World Series MVP as a catcher for the Blue Jays. Why? Because he got hot. And you look at the Blue Jays roster from that World Series, and it's like, there's like seven Hall of Famers on it. You're like, Pat Borders won the MVP. What? Well, that's like, I don't know if they give out an MVP in Wild Card Series, but it was definitely Trent Grisham, you know, and, and you know, Juan Soto uh, probably second, uh, or and Joe Musgrove. But yeah. – um, that uh, that Grisham catch on that uh, potential oh, kind of double that was that was yeah huge. that that was huge that, def- that took a lot of air out it did that that potentially gets them on the like board two, right I think, I think that was a two one no four I think it would have been was four, four already yeah I so think it was four, four. but still it gets you on the board it's like no outs or one out or something like that yeah so. and you still have and you two still have a few. Here a few of your good hitters up, right? Like you're not at the way, way bottom or you're in position where you could pinch hit. But um, look, it's, it's, it's uh, again, I'm stunned. Neither of us picked the Padres. Neither of us picked the Phillies. Um, This was the only series that went the full three games. Uh, I really thought the Mets would have, would have turned it in their favor here, but they needed to get up early in this game, and, and it just didn't happen. I mean, they just weren't going to hit no matter what, and they were going to need to throw zeros up on the board and, and make it into a bullpen versus bullpen game where they might have had you know, a little bit more of a chance. They just kind of didn't give themselves a chance here. And, and I, I, I don't want to like sit here and just shit all over Chris Bassett uh, because you know, what's he going to do? Like it wouldn't have mattered. Like, would it have mattered if he pitched seven scoreless innings? Like they still didn't hit. I mean, he would have kept him in the game, but you know, it's, it, he's the third starter here, you know? And, and once we got to the number threes, the Padres had, you know, a, a, a at least a slight advantage, but probably a more decisive advantage especially with even though Musgrove I don't think has been a starter in the playoffs you know he's appeared in like 11-12 playoff games something like that and uh, you know Bassett maybe just a couple so there was probably a little bit more of an experience advantage there for Musgrove he's probably just overall a better pitcher I mean I could tell you that I'd rather you know between the two guys if I got to pick one or the other I would I would take Musgrove but I think Bassett's pretty good Um, and and uh, you know but again just shocking Shocking that it uh, that it doesn't work out. And, and, uh, and... We're, Mets, uh, the other thing that annoyed me was that you know there was no ability to Mets to play small ball, and that uh, which again I don't know if it's just weird or just they lost that ability or maybe we overrated maybe I overrated at the beginning of the season. But like you know they get a single like that was it. Like you know there's almost no stealing, no hit and run, no no go there way, no. Nothing like that. It was just sort of like you get you're in a single and you might get another single, and like that was it. And that, that sort of felt like that from like the Brave series onward, um, or in the Brave series and this series. That like you know if you didn't if you didn't get a whole bunch of hits together and like it was just clumped, and you know that's tough to sustain. Like versus the Padres, I mean the Padres like again, doink doink. You know single walk, you know single stolen base, uh, single drives it in, you know, um, you know. Um, Whatever. Single and how the hell do you a single on a sack? I'm sorry. The yeah, the Soto play, you know, there's another sack in there, you know, and they found ways to kind of clump the hits together and, and and unlock it. And the Mets didn't unlock anything. I mean, tonight you couldn't do anything, right? You get one hit there, but and like no walks either. But um or one walk by the end for Musgrove. But um Yeah, you yeah. can't you can't I mean, play what are you gonna do? You can't play small ball with no runners. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's just it's frustrating. I don't. I don't know what to say, right? I mean, literally, you just didn't roll in the card. <laughs> and then, and then, you just... know, when when you're down, you can't play it, right? And when you're getting the runners at at the top of the order, you're probably not going to play small ball ahead of Lindor and Alonso, right? So it, it's uh, it's as Mike Sarah says in the comments, uh, Mets had a great season. They just picked the wrong time to play their worst. Uh, 
Rick Alessandri, our buddy, who actually saved my live stream the other day because I didn't turn <laughs> my friggin' mic on. Well, my old boss, Rick, um, a great supporter of the show, and we appreciate you, Rick. Uh, he's now embarking on the long drive home from uh, from City Field, and uh, our pal Lou Monaco checked in at the top. Uh, the game was done at at two nothing, so. It's on to the next round for the Padres. They'll play the Dodgers. The Phillies will play the Braves. And, uh, you know, they were losing. Now, listen, we're going to give you a little background here. So Dog was uh, camping with the scouts this weekend, and he was listening to games on the radio. And when he could get a little internet on his phone here and there, keeping up with the with the Fordham crew chat, giving him some details. And what Dog might not have seen, I don't know if you were around Friday, uh, but – the Phillies were losing 2 nothing going into the ninth inning of Game 1 against the Cardinals. As uh, one of the young Heelys checks in behind, <laughs> and uh, we wave hello. Literal. <laughs> so, <laughs> the dog is literally just going to put up the virtual background. <laughs> hey, it's late. Uh, you know, <laughs> but so uh, we're gonna get into that. Actually, I'm about to explain this whole this whole thing. So the literally walked in and said, "Not good." So that probably sums it up. Yeah. So <laughs> dog. A dog commentary. So, so what dog may may have not seen or you know was 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 working or whatever. The Phillies scored six runs in the ninth inning against the Cardinals, and we talked about that series. We like the Cardinals because they're the fundamentals team, and the Phillies are are the opposite of that. Mm. And what happened in that series was the Phillies played great fundamentally, and the Cardinals had uh, you know just a couple of gaffes here and there, and the Phillies scored six runs in. The ninth, they ended up winning six three because I think that the uh, I think the Cardinals did get a run in the bottom of the ninth, but they didn't hit a ball with an exit velocity above eighty nine miles per hour. <laughs> and if that's not, I and I think I tweeted it. And if that's not the most Shigon thing, like hashtag Shigon, like our buddy Jeff Fry, like that just explains what playoff baseball is. Like put the ball in play. Even Nolan freaking Arenado, who's probably the best fielder at any position in the entire league. If, if you know, it, at worst, he's in the right argument. There, right there, yeah. Right? Yep. And there's a ball that he fields probably 99 out of 100 times. And he didn't make an error, but he just charged it and he, like, missed it. Why? Because they were putting the ball in play. They were putting pressure on the defense. Yep. And even the best fielders at some point can crack when you put – the ball in play. Trent Grisham had a big gaffe a few years ago for the Brewers, and it cost them a series. And since then, that guy's been like a superstar in playoff games. Maybe like something clicked in his head or whatever, and he was great in this series. So Trent Grisham was was on the wrong side of one of those a few years ago in a Brewer uniform. Look at him now. Um, you know, guy hits 184 during the regular season. He gets to the to the postseason. He's Ken, Ken Griffey Jr. For goodness' sake. Um, so you had that, right? And then the Phillies close it out in the second game behind uh, Aaron Nola, and now they've decided to make Zach Eflin their closer. So who knows what the what the Phillies are going to do? That's a weird matchup for the Braves because I don't think they were expecting to play the Phillies, and I don't know how well the Phillies play the Braves, but I feel like the Phillies are kind of playing with house money, and if they start hitting, they could beat anybody. Um, they could beat good pitching, even though yeah, they didn't I mean, they, score they, I a think ton of went, runs. I think they went two-two. I mean, they got swept. They had seven remaining of like sort of the last crunch for the Mets uh, when the Mets and battling the Braves. Uh, Phillies, I think, got swept the first one, which led to much grumbling in the Healy House. And then I believe it was, they split the two. I think there was I think it was two and two or three and one Phillies. Uh, the back the back four on that when the when the Braves had their one the one little dip with all they they returned to reality. Um, and so how about was, and that was it. How about this, dog? How about this? The Phillies closed the game, the, the, the season rather, with a 10-game road trip. They had a two-game lead on the Brewers, who I think closed with an, a nine-game homestand. They held them off. They got the wild card. They just played two in St. Louis. They're going to play two in Atlanta to complete their like three-week, 14-game road trip. And then they return home. God help the rest of the league if they happen and to win the reward those they games. Have to go back to Philly. <laughs> yeah, wow, my God, talk. If I be the bourbon talking, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the bourbon. 
<laughs> oh boy, dog with one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer, and that's just, and that's before we started the show. Um, exactly. <laughs> so the Phillies, like, if they could steal one of those two games, and then all of a sudden they get home, it's like that. No team has ever played with as much house money as they. Uh, the Dodgers and, and, and the Padres, they're, they're set. We give you a little preview of that. Um, that's going to be an uphill battle for the Padres, who had to you know use all their bullets here to beat the Mets, but didn't really get tested so much in the last game. And uh, you know their bullpen is going to be ready to go. And their rotation, um, you know, they'll have to come up with something to start with. And uh, you know later in the series, if Musgrove is, is thrown better than anybody, uh, and they can get, like, say, a two-to-one lead, and then they're throwing Musgrove in there. Who knows what could happen? Uh, so we'll see about that. And uh, that, that'll that liven up uh, Southern California here a little bit where the, you know, the upstarts and the, the second-class citizens of Southern California get their shot at, uh, at the big guys over there. The Yankees will host the Cleveland Guardians, um, who scored three runs in the wild-card round, but they only allowed one. <laughs> so, so they advance uh, with a with a two games sweep of the Tampa Bay Rays, and if you missed it, they went to the fifteenth inning on Saturday, and Pedro Serrano, hit the, <laughs> I mean Oscar Gonzalez, hits the walk off home run. He says, "Fuck you, Joe Boo. I do it myself." And he knocks one out of the park, and it's like it looks like the end of uh, well, not the end, but like a home run in the movie Major League, right? Where the the uh, then Indians and now Guardians celebrate, and uh, the Astros are going to play the Mariners. Now, if you were a Met fan, you had to hope that the Mets had in them what the Mariners had in them. They were down eight one in the seventh inning to the to the Blue Jays in Game Two after winning the first game four nothing, and they came all the way back. And they jumped forward after tying at 9-9 on a crazy collision in center field where Bo Bichette smashed into George Springer. And I, I, George Springer was in really bad shape after that. He got carted off the field, so I hope he's okay. I didn't see any reports uh, coming out of Toronto, but I've been kind of out of it this, this entire day. I hope George Springer is okay because that was, that was one of the worst collisions I've seen since, like, Beltran Cameron like that was that that bad. was the worst one <laughs> that was that was the worst one this was yeah. this was like really bad um the Mariners somehow jump ahead 10-9 in the ninth and they uh take George Kirby who's a starter and and they have him close the game out and you know like so the Phillies and the and the Mariners are using cl- uh, starters to close their games here and they they sweep that series so and the Mariners strangely um, they're the only team in Major League history that has never lost a game when they've had a chance to clinch a series. They're four and zero. Isn't that weird? So, if they get up, uh, if they get two wins in the next series against the Astros, then uh, you know, bet the Mariners the next game because like it's a trend that's never been broken before. It's a lock. Yeah. Fun, uh, funny, uh, funny stat. I'm just looking here at the Padres Mets here. So uh, six runs, ten hits for the Padres. 11 total bases, <laughs> just station to station, ding, 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 uh, eight left on base. So they got six runs in and eight left on base. So look pretty, uh, pretty amazing uh, um, conversion there, right, of, of all those singles and all find their way back home. So, yeah, that is that's, uh, off. that's that's impressive. That's tough to do. That is the uh, story, did it. boy. Boy, Twitter's just Twitter's just on and, uh, fire right now. If you're joining us from Twitter for the first time, we're glad that uh, that you're checking in. And uh, if you're watching us live, you're on the Facebook group for Diamond Die Hard, so we appreciate you being here. We have some of our regulars checking in in the comments, like we mentioned before: Mike, Sarah, uh, Rick, Alessandri, Lou, Monaco. Um, um, among them so far, got. Uh, it's it's definitely been one of our more popular streams here, I think, as uh, you get a chance to drown your sorrows or be mad or complain or look forward to next year. Um, or have, have a little fun poking. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. That's, Nobody's that's, doing anything. That's, that's pretty good. That's, that's part of it, right? That's you, know part the, of it. you know the positive for the Mets? They only left two runners on base. <laughs> so we're, leaving, we're, we're leaving like 10 or 12 the other game, so we ain't cut that down yeah. to two. Hey, nobody hit into a double play. The hard way. <laughs> but... <laughs> Sorry. Otani, we got Lum- Otani and Otani and Wright. That's what I'm looking forward to. Well, 
Thank you, dear. Oh, there, dogs. The, dogs the, 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 the diamond cat's bringing me the uh, the cake for uh, Molly's going off to Spain on uh, tomorrow, so we're uh, we're celebrating that. So. Oh wow! And the Healy's are celebrating twenty five years of marriage. So congratulations, dog and cat. Yes, they are dog and cat living together. There you go. With wedded bliss. That's it. With more children than. <laughs> That's uh, it. So, uh, it's it's been successful. <laughs> with three times as many children as the Mets left runners on base tonight. <laughs> you do that. They said there wasn't going to be math, but there's always math when dog is involved. That's it. Um, so as a Met fan, mm -hmm. you're more, are you more pissed or disappointed or what, it, what is it? <laughs> Frustrated? Disappointment. I'm not sure we're at crushing disappointment. But that's probably because I've just been ground down so long. As I said, to, between the Mets and the Army, all my feelings have been crushed already. So, <laughs> so just like if I was, if I was, if this was twenty or thirty years ago, I'd be like, the stuff would be getting thrown around right now. And uh, I haven't gone to there. I don't. Know, you know, maybe maybe the Braves series kind of took the edge off it too. Like you know, you, you sort of just had the feeling it wasn't going to be special. And like you, you hoped, you hoped the life would go on. And then we get it going. And game one of the wild card kind of told you it wasn't it. And, you know, coming into tonight, yeah, I was hoping they'd, they'd, they'd find a way to, to get it done. Right? At least advance. At least, at least make it respectable uh, within it. Um, but, yeah, there's no other way to look at it. I mean, when Cohen took over before the season, again, you would have said this, this was – You'd be disappointed to go on the wild card round, but you'd be pretty happy you even made the wild card. You took you took major steps forward from the joke that you were, and you're now a serious franchise. Um, and we got teased that we thought we had lightning in a bottle, and we did until September 1st. And, uh, you know, the lightning went away. And, um, you know, now it's, now it's questions. I mean, I think, you know, I think I think you got a great badger. I think you've got good, um, good great ownership, fantastic ownership. Um, I think you're getting a good front office around. I, mean, I think there's some talent coming up. I mean, I, I think there's a little there's a little gap. And then the Mets, and we can start talking about this. I don't know, way back when, probably in the spring, right? Like, like for this year, like it, it kind of came together for this year. And then there's some questions like this off season, like you know the next one, like you know, do you, do you sustain? Right? That's kind of what what Cohen's sort of going for. And he's got the money to paper it over to get it there, but. You know, there's there's some questions. I mean, you've got you know Viento, Spady, uh, Alvarez, some of those guys coming come, coming up. You know, not a ton of pitching. I mean, honestly, you're kind of looking down to like Calvin and those guys that like you know high A and, and double A. There's nobody really nobody else really kind of coming up for them. So there's a bit of a dearth in pitching, which is weird for them. That's normally it's the reverse. Um, and you know what? How do you get from A to B on that one? You know, the, the McGill's, the Smith's, the, the Pearson's, like, what, what is that really, right? It's it's tough to tell. You see flashes and then you see, like, mm, maybe not so much. So, I, I think one, one thing you got to find out, I guess, is, you know, is is Francisco Alvarez uh, a major league catcher? Because he's, he certainly looks like a major league hitter. Yeah. But the one thing, dog, you know, catchers are never the sure thing that other position players will be, I think. It's yep. just a harder position to play. It's more demanding. I think what you hope for when you have a great prospect as a catcher is that if he's gonna if he's gonna fall one way or the other, you hope that he's better defensively and you'll sacrifice a little bit of the hitting for that, or even a fair amount of the hitting. Because that's gonna keep him in the lineup, you know, mostly every day um, he's going to handle your pitching staff. You're in a position where if you're you're the Mets, probably that he doesn't have to bat high in the lineup. You know, the Orioles turned their year around when they brought up Adley Rutschman, and he was the number one prospect in baseball. And, you know, he, he looks like the real deal on both, but especially defensively um, and as a leader, that's that's at the forefront of his game. Yeah. So we'll have to see if Alvarez is is that kind of guy. Like to me, he looks like his stick looks probably better than a lot of these guys. Like he looks like he's like a straight up middle of the lineup bashing kind of dude. Yeah. So there's the DH now in the National League. So you know maybe like 
You have other decent catchers there. To me, dog, as you know, I like a catcher that could catch 100 games and another catcher that catches 62. That's yeah. what I like. And if and so this way, if you want a DH, um, you're not putting that much of a load on the catcher if you want his bat in there every day. And you could even you could even lessen the load if he's that good of a hitter and you want to DH him. Or, or find an extra position for him, depending on how your infield or your outfield is. Like, I'm a big believer in, you know, the versatility of of a catcher. I, I don't think the Yadier Molinas, you know, grow on trees. But if you were signing up for, uh, you know, for Yadier Molina's career for Francisco Alvarez, like, you'd take it right now and you'd be like, okay, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll sacrifice some of the hitting to get that guy who still at 40 was, uh, you know, turning pitchers' careers around like, uh, you know, Jordan Montgomery and, and uh, you know, Jose yeah, he, yeah, he's, he's a um, He's a trick one, right? I mean, 20-year-old kid. Um Ideally, you probably would love to leave him down the minors like another year and develop like all the like really work on the catching, work on the fundamentals, calling the game, running the uh, running the place and so forth. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see, right? When you when you have it now where he's a natural DH, and you know, can you can you do that development up in the majors if you're DHing most of the time and you're sort of like you know the the catcher B. Right, where you're you're doing the the fifty sixty games catching and maybe you're DH in the rest of the time. Um, I don't know. That that'd be interesting. Like you know, how, how does that sort of fit? Particularly if they you know, say you keep Degrom and and you have Scherzer, that you know you have you have experienced veteran pitchers, and you're a twenty one year old kid catcher kind of coming in. That's a um, that's a tough thing. I mean, and the rest of the pitchers generally are are you know you know, 30 plus or so with the exception of like the real young guys that he kind of came up with. Um, so I have a way, I have a way for that. All right, let's go. He catches against left-handed pitchers and then he DHs against most righties. And then you give him an occasional day off or you have to understand that in the games against righties, maybe he's going to pinch hit or, you know, come in and, and catch a couple of innings at the end of the game. That's gonna that's gonna put his load at probably sixty ish games, and then you have somebody else in there that's uh, you know gonna catch all, the entirety of the game pretty much in games that you're that you're winning, and in games that are close and you need the stick, you're gonna pinch hit, and either he'll be the pinch hitter or he'll come in for you know to to just man the position at the end, and that's a way to bring him along. It doesn't give him necessarily as much workload. Um, behind the plate, but it does ease him into it. So in other words, he's not going to catch as many innings as he would in the minors, but the quality of innings that he's going to catch are going to be significantly higher because they're going to be from your major league staff with other major league catchers there to like advise him and take him under the wing. So that might be the way that I would do it, or you know, or you could do it the other way. He catches against righties and you know against lefties. Maybe I'd actually lean more towards DHs. Yeah, or like, or like match them up with like a one or two pitchers, right? Who like really have a good rapport with them or whatnot. Um, I kind of like him DH him versus a lefty because that you're kind of counting on him more to be the the banger against a lefty. That's really what his sort of core strength. So he can co- sort of fo- focus on that during the uh, the days that he uh, um, that he's really sort of needed. And then like when the righty's on there, you kind of bat him down seven or eight and let him focus on the on the pitching. Well, we'll have to see what they decide to do. I mean, McCann's still there, right? I think Nito is, is still there. And, you know, that position, I think, is going to be well up for grabs. I mean, I like Nito as a clutch hitter. Uh, I think his pitchers really like him as a receiver. And I think generally McCann's pretty well regarded, too, as a, as a defensive guy. So yeah. you can you, you don't necessarily need righty-lefty because uh, Alvarez is a right-handed bat. You don't need a righty-lefty platoon, so to speak. Um, you can, there's different ways that you can platoon or, or job share as, uh, at, you know, at the catching position, probably more so than, uh, than other positions where, you know, it's more cut and dried. It's kind yeah. of the right. And just, thing. and just having that, that third catcher, right. I mean, I was saying like, that's the other sort of thing going to the playoffs, like I would have taken him. I mean, they went up taking him over at Vientos, but, um, I was like him versus rough. I'm like, I think I thought he had more value. So if you're going to have a, just a guy who's a lefty 
lefty masher as a DH. I'm like, get the guy who's also a catcher, right? That gives you the flexibility in the, in the sixth, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth inning that you can hit for a guy, you know, and, and still, if, if you have to have somebody to, uh, to stay in there and catch. It's uh, another thing too, that they're going to have to figure out is, um, you know, the makeup of the bullpen, right? You got, uh, you know, Lugo and, and Diaz are not going anywhere, I don't think. Um, and, you know, you probably that was one area that they could have shored up a little bit better yep. at the trade deadline. And, uh, you know, they didn't quite do it. Maybe it's some of these younger guys that, that come in that they bring them in to start as uh, as relievers and, and see where it goes from there. But they do have some decisions to make at the, uh, you know, at the rotation level, too. And listen, if DeGrom sort of shocks all of us and decides to uh, decides to depart, um, you well, know, to Atlanta, let's let's get let's get the full pain in there. <laughs> Uh, oh, that would be that would be horrid. Boy, that, that would, would that oh would God. that would be a rougher day than today. I'll be. I honest. was gonna say that would be a darker day than this. <laughs> yes. Poor Rick, he's driving home right now. Well, I don't know. I I don't know if he's driving. I hope he's taking an Uber or a limo because if he hears that and he thinks about it, he's gonna try. I, I don't want him to drive off the road, Rick. My God. Um. Yeah. You know, it's like I said before. He's 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 a he's a risky signing, too. I think with the with the health stuff, he could be a risky signing for the play. I mean, I think I'm fine with the, with Cohen now and pay whatever to keep him in the Mets. He's a special player after he spends the entire Mets career, his entire career with the Mets. I think that's great. Uh, within it, I'm like you know, there's again, there's I think there's only one or two teams that can take that sort of financial risk of he doesn't have something else. They lose another half a season or a full season or. That's it, right? I mean, he's had a lot of issues, um, and I I'll think, say this: I'm, Doug. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this this end of the season too was, you know, the jump up in innings and stuff like that. That might be a little bit was kind of coming out. And if that's the case, then all right, the next year hopefully you're you're ready to kind of blast it through the for a full season. He didn't exactly spit the bit against the Braves, I don't think. Okay, yeah, three solo homers, whatever. They still weren't scoring runs when they needed to score runs, and it was not his not epic, his not his epic performance. But in the in you know, he won your only playoff game that you won, mm-hmm. so he showed up and he showed out in that game. And even if you get through a season with him like you had this year, like. Okay, say he has a little problem here and there and he doesn't pitch the first half of the season, but you're still good enough to make the playoffs. You kind of like achieved what you needed to achieve by by getting there. And, you know, but how much how much are you if, paying for it? That's where I mean that's what it gets down to, right? I mean it, it's you know, that's cool. What if he wants forty million? Here's me, dog. You know me. Well, you know me, that's dog. A tough tough nut. I'll spend it on the pitcher because I'm, I'd be much more willing to make a mistake on the pitcher than spending it on the hitter. And I'll give more money for less years. That's my philosophy. I say it over and over again, and I think it, I think it proves out over and over that if, it, that if you do that, you actually lessen the risk. And if you have the type of franchise that can afford to do that, then that's a way to mitigate risk against those things. They signed Max Scherzer. $43 million is too much, okay? It's too much. He's not worth that. He's he's not. And but you only signed him for what? 2, 3 years. So I mean, your mistake is is truncated as opposed to signing him for 37 million over 5 years or 7 years or something like that. So if you're these big market teams, to me that's that's the way to do it. I'll give you I'll give Aaron Judge, you know, Judge is the other guy, right? I'll give Judge more money per year and I'll just take a couple of years off the end. If I'm paying him more, and it puts me over the luxury tax or whatever for the short term, I'm not going to be burnt by it in year seven. That's when I don't want to be burnt by it. I'm not going to just keep selling my future when I just, I simply don't, I don't need to. I don't need to sell my future. You, here's more money. Here's a shorter term. If, if you want the longer term and you get more money out of that, then so be it. But you see it over and over again. That's the way it proves out. The Albatross contracts... Uh, kill franchises they kill franchises more than any other thing and if you never 
introduce those to your payroll, you could still have a high payroll, you could still be over the luxury tax, but you're always going to have room to waggle out of it and make the moves that you need to make in whatever year it's going to be with whatever, whatever general manager you have at that time. And a lot of these teams have had some stability at, at uh, the front office level for a number of years, and, and the success is, uh, is showing that. Look at the Nationals, dog. Look at the Nationals, what, they, what they're giving up on, right? They, they basically got rid of every guy. I, I think Victor Robles is like the only guy left from the World Series champs, and that was 2019. Victor Robles, that's the guy. <laughs> He's the mainstay like of, of guys that play. I mean, because now I – did, I think uh, I'm a well. Strasburg still is under contract, and I I think uh, oh you know what Patrick Corbin might still have another year or two left, so I might be wrong. But out of guys who were playing on the field this year, I think those two uh, Robles and and Patrick Corbin were like the only guys left. So I'm probably wrong. If I am, just just ether me. It's no big deal. I'm not you know an expert on the the hundred seven lost Nationals here. But um, but you know they. They signed Strasburg to that contract and, you know, they signed Corbin to that contract and they've had to gut the rest of their team. They had to get rid of Juan Soto just to kind of like lay waste to their, their, uh, you know, future payroll, what it's going to be so they could have a chance to like rebuild and, and turn it around and maybe hope to actually get something from Strasburg at the end of that contract. I mean, you don't want to be in a position where you have to trade your best player because you can't put a competitive team out there because of the payroll or, or whatever it is in year to year. So, uh, you know, we don't think that this kind of stuff is going to happen to the Yankees or the Mets, but guess what? It did. I mean, the Yankees with the with the A Rod contract, right? Yeah. That that that. Yeah, I mean, they won the World Series in two thousand nine. Who knows what they missed in between? And if Mike Sarah's on, he's going to be fired up about that. I'm going to see a comment here. And I wish Joe Sarah was on, but it might be past Joe Sarah's bedtime. That's but true. they'll tell you. They'll tell you that A-Rod contract, they never needed to sign him again to that to that second contract. That was a bad contract for them at the end. They could have just let him opt out seen where it was going to take him. He didn't seem to have many suitors and he went directly to George Steinbrenner. He got the 10 years, 270 million. And you know, the Yanks paid for it at the end. And that's why they haven't been to a world series since 2009. They got the 2009 title, but they haven't been back since. And they're the Yankees. So more is expected of them, regardless of what their fans expect. More is expected of them, not just from their fans, but from baseball fans. If like, oh, the Yankees, like the average fan probably doesn't realize it's been since 2009 that the Yankees haven't been to the World Series because they were used to seeing them there. And they're used to seeing them near the top of the standings. And they're used to seeing them in playoff games. But contracts like that even hurt big market teams. They do. It's proven over and over. I mean, I'll, I'll give you one more here. <laughs> now, it's it's distorted with COVID and everything else like that, but I'm, I'm just playing around looking at the Grom's numbers here. Right, so he signs, signs the deal in, uh, I guess, 19 to 23. Uh, team opt for 24, opt out after this year. So 20 gets 25 million, pitch 68 innings. 21, 35 and a half million, 92 innings. This year, 35 and a half million 64 innings. So if you add those three, add those three together, you say I got like two, two fifteen, two twenty, which is he's done two seventeen in 2018. So he was a 200 inning pitcher, um, you know, 17, 18, 19, and he was close on 15 with 191. So you stitch together 2021, 20, 22, he's he's got was it 71, 96 million dollars for basically a full Degrom season worth over the last three innings, the uh, last three seasons. And he's 34 now. He's going to be 35 next year. I, I tell you, I mean, even that, I mean, if, if you're the Mets, I mean, do you go 3 one you know, 4 one Maybe, right? Those are, those, you start getting me some big numbers there. Um, Four. How about how about a guy who has, who has a sniff the full season? How I mean, about two? How about two years, ninety six million? <laughs> <laughs> how about that? 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 would that would be a bargain, right? You're basically, yeah, he's, he, you're basically he's, sit together one one year season and cost you that. Why not you get two? Yeah. months. that'd be great. He's, um, and he and he's still not a fifty million dollar a year player, which 
Uh, if you listen to the show, uh, you know. But if you don't listen very often or you miss this episode, we already told you who the first fifty Who's million dollar year player is going to be. And he's going to be from New York Mets. Hey, it's Shohei Otani, <laughs> and he will not be coming. Will not Come be coming to now. the Mets. He Come will on, not, he will not be showing up there. Hey, that's it. You let Degrom walk. You sign Otani. Ooh, hubba hubba. That's a no, tough that, that's no, that's pointless to me. There's no reason to let one walk to sign the other. Get them both. I love of it. course, I love you it. get no, them I both. Love it. See, I see. I'm not used to acting like a Steinbrenner. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but it's already when it's already your guy, and you're just adding the other guy. That's that's smart. So again, I'll overpay for the pitchers all the time. Why? Because of what you just saw in 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 tonight. So say you get one hit. Right, and you're not scoring runs, but you do have that extra guy to throw out there who's going to match those zeros or keep you within a run, and you only need a big hit. It changes the complexion even of the way the eighth and ninth inning are played. Right, if you're if you're close, you you can't have enough pitching. You can't. It just there's no way that you could have enough pitching, and and uh, you know Otani's been a great pitcher this year, and he's got you know sort of a similar history to uh, Degrom, but short term, high money. That's that's the way I go. Uh, I do it for Judge. I do it for Degrom. I do it for Otani. Maybe Otani, I go a little bit more because he's younger, and because he's two guys. If even if he doesn't pitch that well, he's still, you know, a twenty-five million dollar or thirty million dollar a year hitter. And if he doesn't hit that well, he's still a thirty-two million dollar a year pitcher or more. So he's he's the guy that's you know, once he gets to a playoff team. Right, it's just a huge advantage. Like, imagine him being on either of these teams. Imagine him being on any team in the wild card round, and think of how much of an advantage that is. Yep, it's a massive advantage to have that guy on your team in a playoff situation. Mets would but, have had three hits tonight <laughs> if we had him. <laughs> listen, he might have led off with a home run. Sure. He might have won the first game. Like we, you know, I don't know. Yeah, four maybe. Million maybe four million dollar guy asked. <laughs> he might have. Can you give me seven shutout innings? Yeah, or, or or can you hit me a home run leading off? I yeah. mean, you know, all of a sudden it's it's. Why not both, Mister Fifty Million? <laughs> yeah, why not? He how many times did he do it? He did it a bunch of times for True. for the Angels. So yeah, one hundred and sixty innings. That's two that's two to ground seasons now. A a lively lively episode. So so I was saying before that dog was uh, he was camping with the scouts for the majority of the weekend he had to uh, he was he was using the radio old a little school. chilly out there <laughs> a little, using the radio we were, as, so we were as cold as the met bats <laughs> yeah that's right baby um, and uh, he was jumping into the uh, to the Fordham whatsapp chat to, to get a couple of details here and there and uh, so today I guess uh, I guess you got back in the morning dog we started it out. Giants in London against the Packers, the Jerry Milani Packers. And uh, I picked against the Giants in the pool at seven and a half. I was like, ah, come on. Like they're seemed like uh, a no brainer. I'll be honest. Everybody, (laughs) everybody's out. Like they can't, you know, they'll, I I like the coaching staff. I, I, you know, I like the way the guys are playing. Just outgunned house money. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm like hoping everybody's hurt. They'll keep it like to, you know, 2013, and then in the end, you know, the Packers will drive down. They'll, you know, kick a couple of field goals or maybe get a field goal and a touchdown, just put it out of reach, win by 10 or 17. And then the Giants shock all of us down 17-3, 20-10, and uh, they come all the way back and they win. And, and uh, I you know, I'm a little under the weather. Everybody in the Rizzo house, a little bit, well, mostly everybody in the Rizzo house, maybe like a little under the weather, either getting over it or starting it or going through something. And we're like never sick over here, so that's a little bit of a weirdness thing. Debbie Rizzo on the couch right now with the chills and maybe a fever saying, only wake me up if the Mets rally, otherwise just let me sleep. <laughs> True story. Just, just give I'm not some, making fun of her. Just give her some NyQuil and bourbon. <laughs> oh, my God. She needs it. She needs it. Um. So, uh, so I, I, you know, I wasn't like at my full, you know, Riz hundred percent, you know, the throat's a little sore or whatever. You're and, working uh, it on the, working in on the hockey. So I had to, I had to do a hockey game today for the New Jersey Rockets girls, the U19, 
Double A Rockets, who are off to a great start. So if that's my other YouTube channel, you can find that. Check out Joe Rizzo Rockets on YouTube, and you can check out uh, Louisa Rizzo, who's been on the show before, and uh, and her teammates. They're having a great season to start out. Great and, call, and I, great calls, by the way, Riz. I gotta say, oh. I, I was checking out. There was some awesome calls she had going on there. Thank you very much. The girls make it easy. They play exciting. They have great goaltending. And uh, they got some some incredible defensemen and and some forwards uh, who who are really potent and they play good tough D, uh, you know, all the way and in, in, in all three. It's great. I love it. I love doing play by play and I get such great responses from uh, from the parents and and even the players on both sides. Like even the ones who you know are are from the other side. I've gotten so much great feedback from doing that. So uh, you could check that out. That's my other world there where I'm doing play by play. And um, so I, I was like, you know, usually I like to get up for those games because I like to bring the enthusiasm. But I was like driving it. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I, I, I don't have everything today. I was we listened to that giant game, the fourth quarter, Bob Papa and Carl Banks. It, yeah. It's I, I it's probably it's so great getting to hear Papa and Banks, like get a chance to be happy. Like I, I, I get joy from their joy. Listen. But they're they're so good that like it's they almost are. better than watching the game. And and Luis is not a big football fan. She was into it. We were jacked. By the time we pulled up to the rink, we listened to like the last whatever two plays in the car. She's like, "I'm gonna stay in the car and just listen to see what happens." I'm like, "Yes!" Oh, <laughs> and I was so jacked from that game, and it was good because I, I I carried it into uh, their hockey game, which was a heartbreaker, dog. It was two two. They got uh, they gave up a power play with a minute fifty one left and gave up a power play goal with twenty one point eight seconds left. Oh. So that was like oh. that was the heartbreaker. But you know the Piedmont Predators. I mean, if you know anything about the Piedmont <laughs> Predators, <laughs> that's hockey, Susan. <laughs> um, so the Giant game did get me jacked up. I, I instead of being like, you know, this little whatever you got to push through, and you know, got home from. Uh, from the hockey game, and then I was checking out the uh, the Cowboys and the Rams, which is always popular in our in our Fordham chat because we got uh, a couple of people, Paul and Father Russ, big uh, big Cowboys fans, and you know we're all rooting against the Eagles for Boomers Cardinals over there, and then the rest of us are, you know, Giants, and we had the Packers. It was like everybody's teams were involved in it today, so that was a good lively piece over there, and uh, and then it was time for for Mets Padres, and I'm like, man, this is a hell of a day. And, um, you know, pushing the envelope, talking to dog. What do you think? We're going to go live no matter what. And uh, then it start, you know, it starts to look not good. And dog thinks that I'm always setting him up because I want him to be miserable. Meanwhile, if you go back to the shows, most of the times that we've gone live when our teams are on, he's gotten the better of me. I got it a few times early, but it's been like almost all dog since then. But, uh, you know, now this one is Mets lose. And I'm like, you know what? We're totally exhausted. I know dogs beat. He was camping all weekend. It takes a lot out of you. And, um, still dog, you know, you get up for it and you do the show and I, and I, and I appreciate it. You go down wearing your Met hat. Um, I have just been front running with my giant hat on. I have not taken the damn thing <laughs> off since the beginning of the season because it has not gotten nearly enough use. It has gotten nearly enough use. Uh, no, oh. It has not gotten enough use for the past however many years since I've had it. So now I wear it like all the time, and uh, you know they're four and one, so we're we're a little bit psyched about that. Uh, as Frank says in the chat, it's change it's a change culture with Dayball. Uh, true, Joe Shane, the 100%. GM, Brian Dayball, the uh, the uh, the head coach. Like the Giants have totally morphed this thing around. If they and we've talked about it offline too. If they had either of the previous coaching staffs, maybe even the last three, they're like, what, zero and would, five this right been, now? This would have been this would have been thirty to six. Yeah, zero and five, maybe one and four, maybe. Yeah. Almost certainly not even two and three. Maybe McAdoo would have been two and three. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But maybe. probably not. Maybe. Yeah. They're winning games that you know. They shouldn't have won that game today, but they just out they actually just outplayed the Packers with what yeah. they had. I Mandora mean, Jackson goes out, right? I mean, yeah, like, I, yeah. But both both corners are out. I'm like, you got this guy I never heard of and this guy I definitely didn't hear of. <laughs> it's like I'm like, this guy this guy off, the, off whose practice squad to go to our practice squad to go on somebody. And uh yeah, it's just a you know, it's a total turn on that. The, the coaching has been tremendous and 
I, I was even saying like, you know, like someone like poached a couple of guys off the giant practice squad. I'm like, what was the last time you heard that? Right. I mean, that's a sign right there. Like, I mean, you, you're not all the way up there. You haven't had time to build the whole you know, organization up. I'm like the guys that like, you know, you, you're able to add to the organization. Other teams see that there's some value there and pick them off from them. I mean, it's been forever since I've seen someone get taken off of the, uh, the giant squads. And how about the New York football jets? Three and two. Yeah. Listen, that's another Zach, one. Zach looks uh, like the real deal. It's a different way there. And they're, I, getting, I feel like... and they're getting through her injuries, too. They have a ton of injuries on offensive line, which probably in the past would have killed them. And hats off. They're finding a way. Now, I don't feel like they benefit the same from the coaching. But, you know, in terms of, like, the technical aspect of it, but uh, Salah seems to have the team really motivated and at least on the same page. Now, technical-wise, I don't – like, I feel like Dayball's really shown me that, like, the Giants are just prepared for every situation yeah. and they they go out there and they, they know what they're going to do. And, you know, if they get if they get beat on that, they get beat. But they knew what they were going to do. Uh, you know, the Jets sometimes I, I, I don't know, but like Zach Wilson in there makes it look a heck of a lot better, doesn't it? I mean, yes, I, yes. I, I, I I like them uh, to, you know, to begin with. But the guy basically was out for like seven weeks and he came in against the Steelers. Now the Steelers suck, but he still came in and he drove, you know, the team down to two yeah. touchdowns and they on the, road. Uh, on the road and, you know, in Pittsburgh, they Rabbit only had to get it. Yep. They only had to get a field goal to tie it. And he put them in the end zone for the touchdown to win yep. it. That's a big deal. It's the NFL that the, di- the difference between these teams in terms of talent is marginal. The difference with it, it, these games are one in the margins and it's things like coaching and quarterbacking and, you know, utilization of the guys in your roster that makes the difference. And the Giants have have done it technically just so well, uh, like even just making the right calls at the right time. Like who bl- like Aaron Rodgers has just made a whole career out of killing the blitz. The Giants on fourth down, they 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 blitz them and they knock down the pass. They knock down two passes. When does Aaron Rodgers get his passes knocked down? Yeah, I mean he's not Kyler Murray. Yeah, I mean and that's right? the giant D is 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 uh is um is blitzing right. And I, I like I like the fact they stuck with what they uh what they uh are believing in right. So it's like all right, Rodgers is great against the blitz. You know what? We're still gonna blitz a lot. No, not 100 percent right. So you're gonna you're gonna change it up a little bit. And maybe less than against Rogers than you would against other guys, but they still push him to shove. Crunch time, they went back to what their their philosophy is, and uh, you know pressure breaks pipes, and they broke some pipes today. They did, they did absolutely, and the jet, you know, the Jets did the same thing. I mean, the Dolphins, they had Bridgewater in there. You know, two is still out. They knocked Bridgewater out. Now you got a what a a. a a, a rookie in there. What was he? The fifth, sixth round pick. And, uh, you know, they just, they just overmatched them. I mean, the dolphins were still trying to run the ball and the jets were just going up and down the field against what's, you know, supposed to be a pretty good defense and, you know, a rivalry game. They just, they just trounced Miami. And, uh, all of a sudden, you know, they're three and two and they're a game behind the bills and, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Right. I mean, yeah, bills Gardner, definitely Gardner had a great game. Yeah. He was, he was, he was blasting the uh, guys in the blitz. Uh, they, they, they called them sauce in college dog, but when you play on Sundays in the NFL in New York, I feel like they got to call you gravy (laughs) (laughs) sauce or gravy. He's both. He's sauce and gravy. That's how good he is. Um, yeah. So you got, it's, you know, it's, it's weird that like we're excited about football, no matter which team you root for in the New York metropolitan area. Because usually, you know, by the time it's been October, the last like five years, your team has been basically, you know, <laughs> out of it or you're just hoping for some kind of miracle, right? And you're looking you know, at mock drafts. <laughs> what we what we haven't really had is that combination of, you know, baseball for, for both teams, right? Like the Mets make it back to the playoffs for the first time since 06. And now you get the Mets and the Yankees in there, and you got the Giants and the Jets playing well, and then the Mets kind of come up with this disappointment, and and it's like you felt like you were on a roll. Whether you're a Met fan or not, you kind of feel like the area is on a little bit of a roll. The hockey teams are looking up. The Rangers were in the 
in the conference finals last year against Tampa Bay. The Islanders were in the conference finals the previous two years. The Devils have perhaps Not you know the good. best. <laughs> what no, the Devils have brought to us now. We're all we're all we're all Dallas now. So <laughs> I, got, I got my boy Naz down there. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But the Devils have one of the best young cores right in the yeah. league, and yep. they're they're hopefully ready to you know take a step up and ignite those those rivalries in those games a little bit. And like now, you kind of feel like this whole New York area awakening is is coming. And uh, even you know, well, I can't say so much for the Knicks, but the Nets got their their stuff squared away with uh, you know with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. Ben Simmons, so, so they look formidable. You know, the Knicks awoke a couple of years ago, took a step back last year, but they're not a laughing stock as, you know, the way they were. It, it's like, the, you know, the, we've been taking it from the mass holes for years, and we feel like we're ready to deliver it. And, like, so that's even for me, dog, that's why the Mets loss is, like, a little bit more. I'm just shocked. Like, I'm like a deer in the headlights, right? I, I It's just I thought these, like, I thought we were heading to, like, Mets Dodgers and they were going to drag it out and we were going to be, you know, looking at like, oh, wow, if this happens and this happens, we're back to, you know, Subway Series and, you know, and and they're out and they're gone. They had a great season. They got the franchise going the right way. A couple of big moves to to make decisions on. But again, if you just look at the history of things and the type of ownership they have, um, it, the way these things usually pan out is that um if you're that close and you had that good of a season and you and you could say, you know, we were a win against the Nationals on on uh, June 8th away from winning the division and being in a different spot. Typically, you try to bring the same team back with a couple of tweaks here and there. And you don't like, you know, let DeGrom walk and maybe let Bassett walk or something like that. Yeah, we'll see. We will. Uh, we will see. Um, you know, the pitching is definitely going to be the, the thing to kind of address. Uh, be interested to see if, you know. Um, Nimmo, I think, has certainly played himself into a, another contract. Um, so we'll see if the Mets take care of business with that. Um, do you extend in Alonso? You know, I would I would say you should. We'll see if they want to uh, pull the trigger on that or not. Um, we'll see what sort of new philosophy comes out of that and what sort of uh, ownership philosophy uh, Cohen has with that. Um, you know, whether he wants guys to you know play for their play for their dinner and then reward them when they do. You know, does he do something with Diaz or something like that to to take it long term? Maybe, right? Um, but uh, you know, fun fun times that I said it's uh, it was the it was a fun journey. It, uh, it ended earlier than we wanted, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sad. <laughs> Get one hit. That's well, bull- dog. One thing. Bullshit. <laughs> one thing we did. One thing we did find out about that you and I agreed on. Nimmo is a center fielder. Yeah, yeah, no four. By the way, Jerry, no four. No, no four. He wasn't, in center. I, he wasn't a. I don't think he was a four in center. I think he was like a three or a two in center, but he was a four in left. For in see. Stratomatic, he, yeah, he was. Maybe. He was. I don't think he was a four in center. I think he uh, had that odd yeah, ball. You're right. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. He had an oddball right thing. There. I think it was a three and a four. He definitely. But was he's a, a he's a, he's a, he's a two. I mean, he's a solid two in center. I would say so. I don't know if he's a one. I'd have to see maybe. No, he's not a one. Yeah, I wouldn't. But I he's mean, a solid two. He's yeah. not a three in center field. Oh, boy, we're going deep now. We're back to our Trent, Trent, Trent tonight showed he was a one. That catch on Canada, that's a one catch. Yeah, that, that yes. That was, that that was, was. That's, you know, that uh, Nimmo, say, he pulls one of those a year. Right? He had that one awesome that one awesome catch against the guy um, late August or so. That uh, that was a one catch. But uh, yeah. Yeah, the rest of the rest of the time, yeah, he's a two, which is plenty fine. All right, dog. I guess uh, that puts a bow on it. We did a little uh, NFL to make to make the dog feel a little bit better. Uh, we, we we should have snuck these things in before because we did this. Uh, a little impromptu FMS Graphics, a family-run, family-owned business for the last 50-plus years. Go to fmsgraphics.com for all your printing and promotional needs. Just clicks away. GaryMascola.com is where you go for all of your real estate needs in the northern and Pascac Valleys in New Jersey. And, in fact, all of northern New Jersey, whether you're buying, selling, renting, or looking to rent, GaryMascola.com is the place to go or call 201-615-3665 and that's the Mascolo Group Realtors. You're going to need to check them out 
And uh, they'll take care of you like you can't. But believe me, you can't believe how great they're going to take care of you. Riz, I, uh, I got to say, I was coming off the mountain today. Going a pretty, pretty rough terrain a couple of miles up, a couple of miles back. I parked and went in to get a coffee or something like that. I came out and looked at the truck. I'm like, I thought I thought of one guy who I needed. You know who it is. You need Big Ed. You're damn right. <laughs> Big Ed's Car Wash. Fa Big Ed's Car Wash, Fairlawn, New Jersey, 17-16 River Road in Fairlawn. So if you're in the Bergen County area or the Passaic County area, go in and stop in at Big Ed's. He's got a 108-foot tunnel, a 118-foot tunnel. He does everything clean and green, very efficient. The nicest guy in the world that you're ever going to meet, despite the fact that he went to Don Bosco, my rival. <laughs> um, so, you know, I got to suck that up because, Herman. unfortunately, a lot of these Bosco guys are my friends now. Um, but, uh, yeah, go check out Big Ed's Car Wash. Your car will come out cleaner than you can believe on the outside and the inside. And the thing is, it stays cleaner longer. And I don't know how Ed does that, but he does do it. So go check that out. And when you're in Fairlawn, you're going to be right next to Glen Rock, and you're going to be – so stressed from the fact that your car is dirty that you're going to need some uh you know you're going to need Matt just lost in a world <laughs> wild card they yeah. shouldn't have been in the first place <laughs> right and your pinched nerve is acting up so you gotta you, you gotta you gotta take care of yourself and you go uh to gatto acupuncture and wellness in glenrock new jersey dr melissa will take care of you book online at gattoacu.com g-a-t-t-o-a-c-u.com or call 551-212 3845 gatoacu.com or 551 212 3845 and start paying attention. Acupuncture is one way, wellness is the overall picture. And uh, Dr. Melissa is go look at the video on our YouTube and see. You could just throw anything at her and she's 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 ready for you. She's amazing. She's amazing. Um, so I think I guess that will will kind of do it. We wrap up the Mets season and uh, it ends in a best two of three loss to the San Diego Padres, who move on to play the Dodgers. The Yankees commence their series on Tuesday with the upstart Cleveland Guardians, a team that is well managed and they do a bunch of things that a lot of teams don't do. They put the ball in play, they play defense, they run the bases really well, and uh, they put pressure on you. And they got some darn good pitchers up front and at the end as well. So the Yankees are going to be in for all they could handle over there. We'll see if uh, it goes a little bit better for them than the Mets. I have a strange feeling the Mets fans will not be jumping on the Yankee bandwagon anytime soon. Uh, so maybe for the dog, he'll be concentrating on baseball from afar yeah, here. Don't root for the Yankees. I root for Judge. I, I don't have any, uh, no may strike against it. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. And and yeah, dog will be talking a little more football. I have a feeling too. Yeah, no, I won't. I mean, yeah, things don't work out. It's okay too. But you know, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to root against the Yanks. They win, they win. That's good. Okay, we had a lot of great support tonight from this uh, impromptu live stream. Some yeah. big, big numbers coming up for uh, for us on the uh, on the peripherals here. So we're glad for that support. A lot of the regulars checking in in the comments, and uh, we invite you to do that. If you're just listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and you're not watching, and you want to check out the video, come to our Facebook group, Facebook.com/group/diamond diehards or we're on youtube you can find us there just look for diamond diehards on youtube and hit that subscribe button and the alerts button and every time we put up some new content uh you will get the alert and you will check it out the youtube is uh not our number one thing here but all the videos are there if you'd like to dive in it's there's dogs, a dogs look a little worn out right now i'll be honest yeah there's a <laughs> whole there's weekend a there's a whole shit ton of stuff on YouTube if that's your thing. So, and we could use the subscribers over there. But really, uh, the lifeblood for interaction is the Facebook group here, where we're mostly doing our live stuff. And uh, we, the uh, the the thing that drives the engine a little bit more uh, for us now and both down the, both now and down the road is uh, if you subscribe to the audio podcast and Apple Podcasts and you know Spotify if you listen to that like I do even Amazon podcast talks you wherever you get your podcast except for like the three places that Uncle Paul wants to listen to that we're not on <laughs> um so other than that it's uh it's our pleasure Rick we're glad to help uh keep you company on a tough ride home we'll be back for you here uh throughout 
the off season for the Mets fan and throughout the playoffs for the Yankees fan or, or other fans, or if you just like to see us and hang out with us, then we encourage you to do so. That is going to wrap it up for a Sunday night. The end of the Mets season comes a little bit too early for all of us Mets fans and non-Mets fans alike. We wanted to see them go, but that's the way the cookie crumbles in 2022. For the dog, Jeff Healy, this is Joe Rizzo, Diamond Diehards is out. <laughs>